Hello, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Netter. Uh, this podcast is being sponsored by the folks at Audible. If you go to the URL you see on the screen, for those of you who are watching the video version of this podcast, if you go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash T-B-R-N, that's all in caps, T-B-R-N, and you'll be able to sign up for a 30-day trial of Audible and have your choice of over $150,000 in books. And trust me, being an Audible customer, uh, there's quite a bit out there for just about everything that you'd want to take a look at. This time we're going to talk about securing the network management card that is in one or more of your APC UPSs. This is something that recently I went through, found there was two ways to do it. One of them is very straightforward and you don't even have to touch the uh, management console for the APC products to do it. We'll talk about shifting from uh, Telnet over to SSH and then we'll also make the shift from HTTP to HTTPS. To get started on this path, you will want to be on the latest version of the code and as of June 2015, the version of code that's common to most of the APC network cards is 6.2.1 it's important that even if your card doesn't have that available, that you go to the latest version for your card so that you get advantage of all the latest fixes and having the, the best level of encryption that you can for a particular card. Now, I'm an old command line router jockey, so I'll admit that up front. So the way I found was the easiest for me to do this, and I have to go through digging a bunch of menus and switching between the different UPSs to make all these changes, is I just telneted or you may be able to find that you've got, already got SSH enabled on the network card. So you log into it with the credentials you've got set up for it and just type web. That will show you the current configuration of the card. And for those of you who are not watching the video version of the podcast, I've got a screen print out here showing the different versions of the card that I initially worked with. And it, it will show you what's enabled, what's disabled, and even the ports. I didn't go changing the port numbers because that's, there was no need to in my situation, but if you're in a high security situation, you may need to go change the port numbers as well, and your, and your IT security people will be able to tell you that if, if that's going to be a requirement. To turn off HTTP, it's just a matter of typing web space dash H space disable. Hit enter. You may not even get a response back on the prompt other than just drop you back to the command prompt. And then type web space dash s space enable, and that will enable HTTPS. Now, the only thing that you've got to do to make this active is you have to reboot the network management card. If you're unsure at all, you probably want to do this in a change window. Now, I did it in a production situation. The only thing I lost was temporary access to the card while it was rebooting. The UPS never went offline, never did anything to cause a problem. But if there's any doubt at all, or you just want to be more on the safe side, do this in a change management window. Now, to make the change over from Telnet to ASSH, again, if you if you haven't done, not doing this all in one session, then you know once you've gotten into your network management card, just type console, and that will show you the current configuration. And I've got a screen print uh, that's showing the different options that are uh, were set up on the card that I'm using. Uh, Telnet was enabled by default, SSH was not. So it's just a matter of doing console space dash T space disable. That will disable Telnet. And then you can do console space dash S space enable, and that will enable SSH. And just like we did before when we changed over from HTTP to HTTPS, we're going to have to do a reboot. Now, there's no reason if you're doing this all at once, so you can't do one reboot and cover both. Your call, it's a matter of what your procedures call for and what you can get approval for if you have to go through a formal change management process. Once you've rebooted, then it's just a matter if you are using the APC virtual appliance on VMware, you will need to go in and do a minor configuration so that the launch buttons will work correctly and then you can still get to your devices through the APC shutdown appliance for VMware and not have a problem. If you're listening to this directly off my website, you can also subscribe via Stitcher, iTunes, or subscribe on Android. So you can keep up with it so you don't have to keep really come back and, and checking the site to uh, stay up in the latest what's going on. 
the next time you're going to have an update from me, I do have the VMware Users Conference for my area coming up this week. And it's my intent to do at least one or two uh, recordings from there, maybe an interview if uh, things cooperate the way I hope they will. And if not, we'll at least have some content lining up for, uh, for future videos. And that's the end of the time we've got for today. So thank you very much for listening to another session of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter.